Welcome to Angel Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, big institutions are only interested in Bitcoin, says NYDIG CEO. So the question has to be asked, what does this mean for the altcoin market? And we really should get verification because this is just one CEO's opinion. Also, cryptocurrencies face greater oversight under Gensler-led SEC. This is going to be the new chair of the SEC. And my question is, what does this mean for XRP and the lawsuit that's going on? And finally, we need to take a look at a uh, great question from a subscriber who asked me what I would do with $100,000 if I wanted to uh, invest into cryptocurrencies as well as uh, save a small business. So I will answer that. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is January 16th, 9.30 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Nice sweet day, gonna be 64 degrees, so I'm gonna get out of here and play a little sand volleyball. I don't know where you're at, but uh, that's what I'm doing. That's uh, the great thing about living in Texas when it's hot as hell. All right, so Bitcoin, 7.6% up in a 24-hour time frame. Unbelievable. Uh, we had been bouncing up and forth. Uh, I think we were almost hit 40 uh, not too long ago, and now we're down at, thir at uh, 35, now we're at 37.5. So just expect volatility. This is normal as we do a stair-step fashion all the way to the promised land, which is uh, major, major all-time highs, because uh, this is the year 2021 for the massive bull run. Ethereum up 16%, that's pretty good. Uh, 12.75, almost gonna hit that uh, all-time high of, I think it was 14.40. Uh, tether's tether. Nobody cares unless you're an auditor or the New York State Attorney General. <laughs> got a polka dot. Uh, 46% uh, in 24 hours. So congratulations, all you polka dot uh, holders. You're up to $17.36. I remember when polka dot first came out, I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, but then I looked at who was behind it because I invest in people. And when I took a look at uh, Dr. Gavin Wood is, is behind it, who is also part of that Ethereum mafia, uh, I was all about it. And uh, I'm glad I got in at the right time. So for all your holders, congratulations, 86% for the week. Uh, XRP has been flipped with Polkadot and really it was close and it was going back and forth, but now there is a uh, massive difference in uh, the market cap. Uh, you've got XRP at 13 billion and Polkadot at 16 billion. So uh, it, was, it was flipping back and forth, but I think this might be it for a, a while until that, that lawsuit uh, gets terminated, hopefully. Uh, Cardano up 26%, good Litecoin 12%, 9% for or 10% for Bitcoin Cash. Link is up, wow, 22 bucks, 46% uh, for the week. Just fantastic gains all around. USDC, no, nah, I don't care about that. Let's see, Ave, they're 40% almost, $200. Um, I still need to get uh, Stani on this channel. So I'm gonna talk to him about loans, mortgage loans, 30 years, what they're talking about. And also, here's a real quick thing, uh, synthetics, this is number 18. We did our, our show, which is the Trinity of Trading, where it's uh, me, Weston, and CJ. Weston does sentiment analysis to trade the chain. Uh, CJ does technical analysis with Market Rebellion. I do the fundamentals. And we had invested four days ago into synthetics at $15.08. And actually, uh, you can see all our trades that we do. Uh, I'm not a big trader, but I just listen to those geniuses and they tell me, uh, do this. And I'm like, yeah, seems reasonable. So, uh, of course, you know, we take a look at different, different factors, but right now it's at 1508. We were hoping for 20% gains and uh, hopefully we get that. Uh, Weston had called it out at 8% for a short term and then for the uh, one to four days, we're hopefully for 20%, but if not, we might have to only take, you know, 13% gains. How awful would that be? So that's what's going on. We'll, we'll be doing uh, Trinity trading every week. So uh, get ready to check that out and uh, we'll do another one uh, next week. All right, and that's what's going on with the market. Real quick, I just want to go through uh, and just look at how would we have done if we were invested just in Bitcoin? Because that's what we need, need to compare it to, right? Want to just invest in Bitcoin, make things easy. Well, if you invested in uh, Ethereum, you'd be 8%, DOT 35%, Cardano 17 Litecoin, you'd be up majorly across most of the altcoins. And that is the big thing about this. That is why for my portfolio, I try to be as safe as possible and I will put in at half is Bitcoin Ethereum. And the other half is uh, different altcoins, uh, you know, Cardano and uh, Voyager and EOS and Polkadot and all those uh, good ones. But uh, for the most part, I just plan to play it safe. And I've been dollar cost averaging for the last uh, four years now. So it just depends on what you want to do. And uh, again, altcoin season uh, looks pretty good for right now. So we'll see how it all goes. Oh my God, sushi, 23%, watch out. And Avalanche, which I need to really check out, looks pretty good. All right, so that's what's going on with the market. Let's jump into today's top story. This one was pretty interesting uh, because 
NY Dig, I, I'm not really familiar with, the, with those guys, so I know what, what they're doing, but uh, I'm going to bring somebody on who, who actually does. And what this is all about, in the latest episode of The Scoop, NY Dig, The Scoop is a podcast brought to you by uh, The Block Crypto. And it's pretty good, but they had NY Dig Chief Executive Robert Gutman. He said the, that most of the serious investors, and that's the key word, serious investors, uh, that he's speaking with are only interested in the largest crypto by market cap. And he states this, 100 out of 100 <laughs> of the last conversations I've had with investors seriously looking to allocate, let's say over $50 million, 100% of those conversations have been about Bitcoin and 0% of them have been about any other crypto asset, he said. So that is an interesting case uh, to talk about. And I mean, this is, this is good to know. What does this mean for altcoins? Does that mean that you shouldn't invest in altcoins? No, absolutely not. This is just what big institutions are doing. I think when very large institutions, when he talks about uh, over $50 million getting into the whole uh, rigmarole or what's gonna happen, uh, if they're gonna invest that much money, then it, that will stabilize the crypto market Bitcoin wise. Now, as far as altcoins, it's going to be a little bit uh, up and down, but that could be what you want. If you're looking for fantastic gains, um, that could be where it is. But for right now, to play it safe, uh, it looks like Bitcoin is the, is the safest bet that you could make because a lot of these places are getting into it. But that is just one CEO's opinion. So what I want to do is I want to ask somebody else who is an institutional player and actually talks to these guys, these billion dollar hedge funds, so we can kind of, you know, just back this up. So let's, uh, let's uh, talk to Alex real quick. So Alex, I just, that was the article right there. And that was Gutman, the CEO. First of all, who's NYDIG and is that the truth? Because you deal with all those different billion dollar hedge funds because you are the head of institutional investment at Bequan. So tell me if that guy's full of it or if that's exactly what the people that, that you talk to are saying. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, nine, first of all, the answer is uh, he's spot on. Uh, the, the folks over at NYDIG, um, which is uh, New York Digital Investment Group, is a uh, group within a traditional asset uh, called Stone Ridge. And Stone Ridge is actually a very prolific manager in the side. And the fact that they have $12 billion plus uh, in assets from investors under management and been doing this for quite some time. They have been under the radar for the last three plus years. Uh, going through various regulation hurdles and getting regged up. One day they popped out into the news and said, hey, we're a qualified custodian. We have uh, our own custody business. We have um, our own this, our own that, all around digital assets. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was quite impressive. But um, they're, they're a very quiet, large force in the crypto space. Got it. Okay. So... That, is, that was the big question. And then the people that you talk to, because you're talking to, and, I, and of course you can't tell me your partners, but when they're asking you for like, you know, talking about cryptocurrency, are they talking about, we want to get into Bitcoin? Are they like, we want to get into Ethereum? We want to get into XYZ, EOS, Cardano, or is it just Bitcoin? Like he was saying. No, it, 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 there, there's two different buckets of the institutional side. One is the corporates, the treasuries. Uh, the investors, those guys are only talking about Bitcoin right now. That's all they want. They're seeing what Square and what micro strategies are doing and how that can enhance their uh, balance sheets or their long term investments. The other bucket is asset managers and those asset managers, depending on what their strategy is, will take arbitrage opportunity in any coin that, that presents itself with arbitrage. But when it comes to the corporates and the treasuries, those institutional investors are only talking Bitcoin. Gotcha. So it makes sense. So Bitcoin, the safe route, but there's still a lot of room to run for the altcoins. There is. And I, I think Ethereum is, uh, is, is a close second in conversation, um, but there, there needs to be some more, uh, how do you say it, uh, long-term uh, long studies done on it. Yeah, I gotcha. All right, man. Hey, appreciate it. And then let's jump back. All right, so I hope that puts it into perspective because it's these stories are great, but really to get the whole picture, we have to get it from uh, multifaceted sources. You know, we can't just just rely on something. We try to get as much uh, sources as we possibly can, and that just makes sense to me. So, uh, just to continue on with this one, I just want to just to uh, follow up on a couple of things. So, 
This was actually uh, the block crypto where you can actually listen to the podcast. But what was in that podcast that wasn't talked about in the other article was this. Um, Bitcoin investment firm, NYDIG, raised $50 million in October. It quadrupled its clients, and life insurance company Mass Mutual purchased a minority stake in the firm. So Mass Mutual, if you remember, they put $100 million into Bitcoin, which is nothing to them because they have billions and billions of dollars. And they are like old school players. So when they put something into an asset, what the CEO of NYDIG talked about, he said, hey, you know, these guys, they do their due diligence. They have a team of people look at all the different assets they could potentially invest in. And it's a very slow process. So when they get to the point when they're actually going to invest, they're going to come big, they're going to come heavy, and they're going to put a lot of money into it. And this is a prime example. So not only do they put money into Bitcoin, they also put money into NYDIG because they did a lot of research. And that's what they found is the best option for them. Uh, this came about because Bitcoin is transitioning to a predominantly institution-owned asset, according to NYDIG CEO Robert Gutman. So this is the big thing. When you see people out there who are big-time players, um, one of them would be uh, Menard, uh, this, the uh, chief investment officer for Guggenheim. At first, he came out and said, hey, we want to invest into Bitcoin at 10000 and 20000 Well, they couldn't get regulation in time. Now it's at 40000 and he went on a little Twitter, a little, twit, little tweet rampage and said, you know what, you probably should take some profits and uh, you know, just sell your Bitcoin because they want the price to go down. And uh, I think that's what's going on. I see that um, Kevin O'Leary from uh, what is it, Shark Tank, and he's on every single time I see him. He's like, well, I don't understand Bitcoin. I don't understand Bitcoin. Blah, blah, blah. And he's been doing this for years. And I'm like, I, I know this guy. Has, he's not stupid. He's got to be investing into Bitcoin and just poo-pooing all over publicly. But then private's like, hey, buy some Bitcoin. Nobody's, nobody's that dumb. Nobody. And, and he always talks about, well, I don't understand the whole process of it. I don't understand. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You were talking about it in 2013. So anyhow, Mass Mutual made a $5 million equity investment in NYD last December as well as a $100 million Bitcoin investment for its general investment account through NYDIG. Based on the set of macro circumstances 2020 presented, COVID, quantitative easing, massive printing, uh, insurance companies are starting to question whether they can go forward only buying corporate credit to make good on policies. Over some number of years, it's hard for me to imagine it is not all of them uh, coming into, Vic, uh, into Bitcoin, he said, if Mass Mutual can get there from a diligence perspective, so can the next one. It's definitely coming. And then he just talks about, hey, you know what? Everybody should be in Bitcoin. It's their fiduciary duty to get into Bitcoin because if not, your stockholders will be like, what did you do? You put it all into cash in the treasury. Uh, the purchasing power of the dollar has decreased. There is so much being printed. We're printing trillions of dollars. You guys messed up. We're not going to invest in your company. We're going to go to a micro strategy. Let me know what the hell's going on. So that is what's going on with that piece. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.